All right, so now you also have callout properties, and that's what I created down here. And you can create a callout easily by selecting the clip and hitting Add Callout. What that'll do is it'll tint everything minus your cursor. So you can use your cursor. You can also use the foreground window. So if you have multiple windows, it'll bring out the one that's in the front. And then you can also do freehand. And freehand is usually what I use to show something on the screen. So let's say I want to show the export icon here in Active Presenter. So I'm going to highlight that. You'll see it go a lot lighter. Now what I'm going to do is I usually blur the background so it kind of calls it to a little bit more attention. You can play with the opacity here so you can see that it gets darker and lighter and then it's also I also usually do zoom up so you can see that what that does is that's actually calling out that portion of the video and so then you can play it. I messed up right there so I'm going to take and have it do that. Now to create that transition all I do is I usually come through here and put ones in the duration. Let's say I messed up right there. So I'm going to, and then it calls it out and kind of shows you what exactly it's doing. So that's kind of a cool little fancy deal. It's not really that hard to create, but it adds a lot to the presentation. So as you get more advanced and as you get more experience underneath your belt, that's a good thing to kind of bring out and show, you know, call the viewer's attention to something. And just like Camtasia, you also notice you have your arrows, you have boxes, you have all that kind of stuff. So you can add an annotation and use an arrow and pull that out. So you also have boxes and, and all that kind of stuff. You can also use callouts to blur. So if you wanted to blur out, similar to like we talked about in Camtasia, you can blur out mm -hmm. personal information, phone number, email address, all that kind of stuff. If you don't want to give that to the mass public, you can easily do that by doing the same thing. You'll add a call out here, and then you'll actually blur the call out instead of blurring the original video. So then you'll take it and you'll draw it freehand. Let's say you don't want to show the timeline here. So you take and draw that, and all it does is blur it out. So super easy and super simple It kind of makes life a little easier on you and you can see that this just like Camtasia is very intuitive it gives you the exact tools that you need to get the job done and no extra tools so it's not bogging you down giving you a million options you can see what the user interface here is designed to do It's designed to give you the editing and then the viewing nice and big so you can get in get it edited and then get it done and then you can also add text up here at the top. So that works pretty much the same way. You can just add a text box and then type out your text. So if you want to show, you know, keyboard shortcuts on screen and all that kind of stuff, you can do that. You can also put buy links in there, show those on screen, kind of make them pop out and stand out a little bit more. And so now you have your video done. It's completely edited. The final step is obviously to export it. So you can either go to file export or I'm a big believer in keyboard shortcuts and the keyboard shortcut to export is command E. So you just hit command E and down pops this super easy and super simple window. You also notice on ScreenFlow you have these little question marks here. What those will do is those similar to help in most other programs is it will walk you through you know what each option and, and how to set up each option on this pane so here you have your save as at your file name and then your where you want to save it and and that's personal preference if you don't see any up here that you want you can also hit other this is similar to most dialog boxes on a Mac and then you also have your preset here most of the time we're going to be using web high or web low and it kind of tells you here this is an H.264 codec at 450 kilobits per second AAC encoding is at 96 kilobits per second you don't really need to worry about that too much but look and see what high does it's now 1200 and 256 so you can imagine that with higher numbers kilobits per second on both the audio and the video higher number is also going to be the file size so you have a little bit better quality but your file size is going to be larger as well so if you're exporting something out you know let's say 1080p or you know some sort of high def something like this is 1080p here then I'll usually export that out as high and that's gonna give you the best quality possible for most of our online videos though you're gonna to want to choose low because it's gonna stream faster and then the file size itself is gonna be faster so you know again we're shooting for something around you know 400 to 600 pixels tall 
Usually I, I do about 50% here, 540 is a, is a good number, good quality with, with a small file size as well. These options down here at the bottom, you don't really need to concern yourself about. Uh, they're mostly for like the chapter and the captions track. That's if you added captions or, or added a chapter track for a DVD per se. And then most motion blur, you don't need to worry about that as well. That kind of cuts down on the frames per second, makes a smaller video, but at the same time, you can imagine it also blurs the video. If you want to scale to a custom size, you can do that here as well, but you'll notice that it does not change the bottom. So you either have to do some quick math or you'll have black on one side or the other or all four sides. So I usually just use scale by whatever here, and then you'll notice that it says the dimensions here in the bottom so if you change this you know it keeps going back and forth so now you're done all you got to do is hit export and you're good to go so that is screenflow